Okay, so let's get into it. The We're talking about all of this research. We've dropped the uh, number of 10,000 IU a few times. Um, it's something that uh, comes up quite a bit. It's all based on this idea of the miscalculation. So everyone needs to know about this miscalculation around vitamin D and how it has brought us to today where the average recommendation for vitamin D is 400 to 600 IU. But most of the research is suggesting that actually 10,000 IU is a more accurate level to be at. So explain this to me. This is a, this is like a... Just an easy question. <laughs> yeah, an easy question to answer. So it's, if you look at vitamin D, of why it was disregarded as like 400, 600 IUs, there was, I think it was 2000, no, sorry, in 1991 to 1998, there was a group called the Committee on Medical Aspects of Food Policy. Mm -hmm. And they did the, they looked at the research that was around and they established, based on statistical evaluation of the data, that the number to reach above a certain amount, so 50 nanomoles, which is what they believe to be a good level of vitamin D, to reach that point... So the goal level for vitamin D was set at 50 nanomoles per litre. That's what they set it at. Yeah. Because they said that anything under 25 nanomole was what caused rickets disease. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and I'm going to emphasise this, what caused rickets disease. Mm -hmm. They didn't care about anything else, just rickets disease. Not what optimised the levels in your body purely below 25 is what caused yeah. rickets. Yeah, that's a really important. That was their focus, right? Yeah. And so How to avoid rickets. Rickets disease, yeah. basically. And so they started fortifying foods. And what they said was, based off the evaluation, because I think it was like 32 studies that they, they'd graphed out. Mm -hmm. And they said, based on that, if you supplemented 600 IUs per day, so if you fortified milk, fortified food, or you supplement 600 IUs a day, you could reach a blood level of 50 nanomoles per litre, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they based the data off. Which would... Um, protect you from getting rickets disease. So nothing about nothing about this would support your <laughs> the functioning of your body. This is the optimal level of vitamin D. Nothing about optimization of vitamin D. Just this is the level that we believe will safeguard you against getting rickets. Correct. And then they endorsed it in 1998. Fast forward to 2010, 2016. You know, our committee in the UK looked at it as well. And everyone ascertained from that data, so not up-to-date data. Mm -hmm. This is from the data from the 1900s. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, I've just given you studies from 1922 and 1947 uh, to give you those dates as well. Mm -hmm. and where they, they knew a lot less about vitamin D. Where they knew a lot less. Yeah. Well, I don't know, Tracy. I well. think they knew a lot more. <laughs> I think they knew a lot more about vitamin D. And basically our committee of nutrition said the same thing they said that six units i use is the baseline of what every every child and adult should be taking that's how much we need to bring our blood level above 50 nanomoles and they stated categorically 20 under 25 nanomoles is where disease is and up to if you supplement daily with six and i use you will reach 50 nanomoles 600 IU or 400? Because 400 iu is the recommended daily allowance and 600 iu is the upper tolerable limit the 16 IU, that's what they ascertained. It was 16 IU was the upper tolerable limit that you should be taking to reach to 50, reach nanom for, yeah, 50 yeah, nanomoles. Yeah, yeah. And the issue... where, where So actually, let's recommend even less. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, if you read the documentation, mm. which as you know, I have, mm -hmm. the problem that they had was they said they can't go higher than this because they don't know what the person's vitamin D they're being exposed to because they said, could they be getting vitamin D from food, i.e. mushrooms and fish, mm -hmm. for example, take example. Would Which, they get can I just say as well, food sources of vitamin D, in most cases, vitamin D is being added to the food source or it's being added, to, if you're getting it through animal, um, you know, animal protein or whatever, the, they're getting vitamin D, synthetic vitamin D added to their food or they're getting vitamin D through the sun. So just to put that out there, there isn't necessarily a natural source of uh, vitamin D through food. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. And so their issue, as you said, was in yeah. food because they were looking at the different sources. But also the sun, I guess, because to be fair when your body is synthesizing something from the mm. sun, you can't control for how much sun someone is getting. So it's really difficult to actually give a recommendation about how much vitamin D you need to ingest. 
Yeah, 100%. And that's the issue that they were having. Mm-hmm. So they made that 600 IU based on not knowing. They had to like generalize it for every single person mm-hmm. because what they were thinking was if we generalize it, then we, we're not going to get what they thought was vitamin D toxicity. Yeah. Because that's a topic we need to talk about, yeah. vitamin D toxicity. But also the, like, the assumption kind of around that recommended daily allowance for vitamin D is really that you're also getting some sun exposure. Mm -hmm. So I think the assumption around that recommendation and keeping it lower is based on an assumption that you're also getting a lot of sun exposure, which we, as we know, is not happening, whether it's because you live in a northern hemisphere country where there is less sun Mm. or like most people nowadays, you're slathering yourself in sun cream before you even walk out the door. A lot of people aren't actually getting that exposure. So I think that's, you know, firstly, a big issue. 100%. Mm-hmm. To go back to this data, the research that they based mm-hmm. their 6 and our user from, in 2014, there was a study done by Professor Ekwaru, and I'm going to say his name wrong, Rugelis. And basically, these two professors came back and they actually looked at the data that the committees had put together. Mm. And when they looked at it, they said the f- statistical evidence was off by a factor of 10. So who had ever done the maths on this had completely set the wrong baselines. Mm-hmm. And So it was literally just a mathematical error. It was a mathematical yeah. error. And yeah. what they said was, if you actually look at that study, it was more closer to get to 50 nanomoles, you needed 8,895 IU. Mm. By the way, I'm just talking about this. I'm going to link the study down below again. It's in the description. Yeah. You can Don't read take it. our word for it. You could read, read it yourself. yourself. Yeah, read too. it yourself. Yeah, yeah. And so they had discovered it was off by a factor of 10. And this is the issue. The data that we've been given, if the data, original data is off and it's been incorrectly, statistically, you know, read incorrectly, mm, mm-hmm. and then you take away the idea that we've not got accessible testing, everyone's vitamin D levels are going to be low. Yeah. Because you're not giving people accessibility. Because you go to a GP and ask them for a vitamin D test, they're going to say no. They can say supplement with thousand I use. Mm-hmm. Supplement two thousand. Every- well, also I think they're particularly in the UK. They're under pressure because there's a lot of people that are requiring vitamin D tests, and so it's putting a lot of strain on having to get a doctor's appointment just to get a vitamin D test. Which is why you'll notice actually in the last decade they. Um, started outsourcing vitamin D tests. So now you can get an at-home vitamin D test through Mm. the NHS. Um, So I think just to put that in context, it is too much strain to be putting on that surface just for vitamin D. But equally, we really need (laughs) vitamin D tests. And it's the cost of the NHS as well. Yeah, yeah, And it's that cost of the NHS because they're just like, we'll just basically supplement. Yeah. supplement and supplement blindly to get to to where you need to be. But you shouldn't be supplementing blindly. You need to know your baseline and you need to know if you're taking higher doses, where it's getting you to. Mm-hmm. And I think, I know this is a topic of conversation we're going to discuss today, isn't yeah, it, as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. 